you know what's creating a real uh, stir right now? It's this possibility of the U.S. maybe putting the brakes on a Chinese AI platform called DeepSeek. Oh, yeah. DeepSeek. It only just launched, what, back in January? January 2025, yeah. yeah. And it's already making some serious waves. It really is. It's... Um pretty remarkable how quickly it's become such a big talking point. This AI model, right? It's from a startup based in Hangzhou. Right. And people are seeing it as a genuine challenger to, you know, the big US names like OpenAI's ChatGPT. And what's interesting, I think, is that it's powerful, but also lower cost and yeah. open source. Exactly. That combination is key. Powerful, relatively cheap, and built on an open source framework. Okay. So this is where it starts getting tricky, right? Because the main worry, ah, uh, according to the sources we looked at, seems to circle around national security. Mm -hmm. That's the headline concern. You've got worries coming from, well, the previous administration, some lawmakers, cybersecurity folks, all about data privacy, yes, but also just China's growing strength in AI generally. Right. And there's already talk of specific restrictions. Yeah, things like maybe banning deep seek on government devices or um, trying to limit its access to certain U.S. technologies. Okay. So for this deep dive, we really want to unpack that. What are the you know the real risks here if DeepSeek operates in the U.S. and maybe just as importantly, what could happen? What are the potential unintended consequences if a ban actually goes through? It's a complex picture, and the first big question that jumps out, I think, is well, would a ban even work? Would it actually slow China down in AI? Right. Would it achieve the stated goal? And our analysis, looking at the sources, suggests well, maybe not. It might even be counterproductive. How so? Well, get this: the efficiency of DeepSeek is pretty stunning. They apparently made huge strides with like a tiny fraction of the resources the U.S. giants are pouring in. A tiny fraction? The, like, what are we talking? The figures mentioned are, are around uh, $6 million in computing power and maybe 2,000 NVIDIA chips. Compare that to the massive investments here. Wow, okay. That scale difference is. Yeah. yeah, it really makes you think if just restricting resources is the right lever to pull. Exactly. And there's more. DeepSeek has already kind of shown it can navigate around some of the existing U.S. chip restrictions. How? By using open source tech, finding, as our sources put it, sort of clever workarounds. So this idea that a ban would just, you know, stop them cold, it seems a bit unrealistic, maybe. Hmm. So they're adaptable. Very. And if you zoom out, a ban could actually backfire quite spectacularly. China has been pushing hard on its own chip and AI industry since, what, 2017? Right, that big strategic push mm -hmm. aiming for global leadership by 2030, I think. Precisely. And you've got your own tech giants, Baidu, Tencent, Alibaba. They're all making serious progress backed by the government. So a ban on DeepSeek could just add fuel to that fire. It might push even more resources into their domestic efforts, actually speeding up China's journey towards, you know, tech self-reliance. Okay, so instead of tripping them up, we might actually be giving them a boost towards independence and AI and chips. That's yeah. quite a thought. It really is. But okay, let's shift gears a bit. It's not just about China's progress, is it? The sources also raise flags about what a ban could do to innovation right here in the U.S. Absolutely. That's the other side of the coin. And what's fascinating is how DeepSeek's mere presence has already, well, shaken things up over here. How so? It's model affordable, open source. It's injected some real competition into the AI market. And that seems to be making the big U.S. tech players uh, maybe rethink their own strategies. Is that where the NVIDIA stock drop comes in? I read about that. <laughs> exactly. The report said NVIDIA stock dropped, what, 17% when DeepSeek launched? 17%. For a company that size, that's it's, huge. It's like a tremor, yeah. It signals real investor reaction, maybe questions about whether some U.S. firms were perhaps overspending or getting complacent. It reminds me of that Sputnik moment analogy Mark Andreessen used, yeah. you know, where an unexpected competitor suddenly lights a fire under you. Yeah. That's a perfect analogy for it. And think about the downstream effects. This kind of competition pushes U.S. companies not just to improve their tech, but maybe also offer better prices. Which benefits consumers, businesses. Yeah. Everyone, really. Right. So if you ban DeepSeek, you remove some of that competitive pressure. And the risk is, you know, maybe things slow down here. Less innovation. Maybe higher costs stick around. Mm. There's a quote in the sources from Brendan Englert uh, from the Stevens Institute for Artificial Intelligence. He really emphasizes how crucial open source platforms are for driving global breakthroughs. So taking one off the table, especially a competitive one. Could inadvertently slow down our own progress. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So point taken. Yeah. A ban might not stop China. 
and it might hurt our own innovation. But let's circle back to those security concerns that started this whole conversation. Are they just completely off base? No, not completely off base. The concerns are definitely there, and the sources we looked at acknowledge them fair and square. The data privacy worries, they're understandable. What are the specifics there? Well, DeepSeek's privacy policy apparently says user data can be stored in China. And that, naturally, raises flags about potential government access down the line. Right, the classic concern with Chinese tech firms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there were also some reports um, about potentially iffy code in their app. Something about data sharing with China Mobile, which is already restricted here. Okay, so there's some concrete points there, like the TikTok situation, maybe, that partial ban on government devices. Mm, it's a very relevant parallel, yeah. Similar anxieties about data security, sensitive information. Putin, I sense a butt coming. Well, the butt is that the sources also argue the evidence that DeepSeek poses a uniquely massive threat might be, let's say, thinner than suggested. How and so? The reality check is that lots of apps collect user data, including Western ones, and cybersecurity flaws. They're not exactly exclusive to Chinese companies. That's true. Vulnerabilities pop up everywhere. And here's a really interesting twist. DeepSeek is open source. Right, you mentioned that. How does that play into security? Well, being open source means the code is public. Anyone can look at it, like an open recipe book. Okay. Now that could expose flaws, theoretically, but it also means potentially thousands of eyes scrutinizing it, finding dugs, suggesting fixes. There's a transparency and potential for community patching that you might not get as easily with closed proprietary systems. Uh, so the openness is both a potential risk and a potential mitigation factor. That's oh. counterintuitive, but makes sense. Exactly. So if a ban isn't the answer, what alternatives do the sources suggest for handling these security points? Regulation seems to be the big one they point to. Like what kind of regulation? Things like maybe requiring US-based servers for American user data, hmm. you know, similar to what's been debated around TikTok. Right, keeping the data physically within US jurisdiction. Yeah, and there's a quote from Jim Coyle at Lookout. He makes a really good point. He says, basically, tons of apps connect to Chinese servers anyway. Yeah. Focusing only on the big names like DeepSeek might give us this like false sense of security. Hmm, like playing whack-a-mole while ignoring the bigger picture. Exactly. Yeah. So the broader idea seems to be strengthen the overall data privacy and cybersecurity rules. Mm -hmm. Make them apply to all AI platforms operating here, no matter where they come from. That sounds much more comprehensive and less targeted, maybe. Right. A more strategic approach, perhaps. Yeah. Now let's talk money. Economics. The sources also paint a pretty concerning picture there if a ban goes through. Oh, definitely. That initial market wobble when DeepSeek launched the tech stock sell-off, NVIDIA losing that huge chunk of market value. The $600 billion figure was mentioned, I think, a massive hit. Yeah, a huge number. That's seen as a warning shot. More restrictions could easily amplify that kind of instability. It signals a wider U.S.-China tech conflict. Which could hurt American investors. Investors, tech companies themselves, and importantly, consumers and businesses who could benefit from more affordable AI. And it's not just the giants, right? You mentioned DeepSeek is open source. That makes AI more accessible for who? Smaller businesses, maybe, independent developers, people who just can't afford the really expensive closed systems from the big players. So it's democratizing AI access in yeah, a way. Precisely. And banning it could choke off that access to cost effective AI that could slow down innovation in places like healthcare, education, where accessible AI could do a lot of good. Mm. There's a quote from Alex Karp, the Palantir CEO. Yeah, his view basically is that the U.S. should focus on out-innovating competitors, not just trying to block them. Run faster. Don't just build walls. Kind of, yeah. Plus, a ban risks, you know, annoying a big part of the U.S. tech community that really values open source collaboration. Okay, so economically, a ban looks potentially quite damaging for the U.S. side, too. Mm -hmm. What about the diplomatic angle? U.S.-China relations. That's another critical piece. A ban on deep seek would almost certainly ramp up tensions. Things are already pretty frosty, right? With tariffs, Huawei restrictions, the AI chip export limits. Yeah, exactly. And China has already retaliated against some of those measures. So targeting deep seek could easily provoke more counteractions from Beijing. Like what? Banning U.S. apps there. Making life harder for American companies. Those are definitely possibilities mentioned in the sources. The worry is sliding further into a kind of tech cold war. Which isn't good for anyone, presumably. Probably not. It could make it harder to cooperate on huge global challenges like climate change, where AI actually has a big role to play. That's a sobering thought. It's also interesting that DeepSeek is apparently being used for some positive things in China already. 
Yeah, the sources mention things like helping draft legal documents, powering government helplines. It just shows the tech itself isn't inherently bad. So instead of banning, what's the alternative on the international stage? The sources suggest exploring collaboration, actually. Working with China, maybe, on global standards for AI governance. Things like ethical use, data security. Trying to find common ground to ease tensions and address the real concerns together. That sounds ambitious, but maybe more productive than just escalating. It's presented as a more constructive path, certainly. Okay, and finally, the sources bring up some, let's say, practical and ethical hurdles with a ban. Yeah, on the practical side, enforcing a ban on open source software is just really hard. Because the code is out there. Exactly. People can download it, modify it, share it. Jonathan Ross from Grok is quoted saying that just blocking Chinese IP addresses that's easily bypassed with VPNs and things, it's not effective. So you'd spend a lot of resources trying to enforce something that's fundamentally leaky. Pretty much. And the argument is maybe those resources would be better spent, I don't know, boosting our own AI research or maybe educating users about privacy risks with any AI tool. And the ethical side. Well, there's a fairness question, right? If DeepSeek makes powerful AI accessible to people or small businesses who can't afford the premium stuff. Banning it widens that digital divide. It could, yeah. Uh -huh. Especially for US small businesses or individuals who rely on free or low cost tools. And there's a broader point about, you know, censoring foreign tech just based on where it comes from, rather than clear proof of harm, that could damage the US image regarding free markets and innovation. Okay, so. Well, we've covered a lot of ground. Given all these potential downsides, it might not work. It could hurt us economically and innovatively. The security risks might be manageable differently. It worsens relations. It's hard to enforce. What's the overarching alternative strategy that emerges from the sources? The consistent theme is really regulate smartly and compete hard. Okay, break that down. So instead of a ban, focus on regulation, clearer rules about data privacy, maybe requiring local data storage, strong cybersecurity standards for all AI platforms here. Level the playing field on security and privacy for everyone. Exactly. And at the same time, double down on investing in our own AI ecosystem, support research, support startups, foster that domestic competition. Build up our own strengths. Right. And maybe even take the lead globally in setting safety and ethical standards for AI, working with allies, and yes, even engaging with China on that. So this alternative aims to tackle the security worries head on, but without all the negative baggage of a ban, promoting your own competitiveness, avoiding conflict. That seems to be the core idea, yes. It addresses the concerns while trying to maintain the benefits of competition and open innovation. It ties back to that quote you mentioned earlier about President Trump calling DeepSeek a wake-up call for U.S. companies to focus on winning the race. Exactly. The focus shifts from blocking to outcompeting and innovating. Okay, so to kind of wrap up our deep dive here, the case against banning DeepSeek seems pretty strong based on these sources. Yeah, the arguments stack up. Unlikely to stop China, could stifle U.S. innovation, might harm the economy, the security fears could perhaps be overstated or better handled through regulation, and it definitely risks making U.S.-China relations even worse. And the alternative path. Seems to be about playing smarter, focusing on boosting our own AI capabilities, strategic investment, clear regulations for everyone, and maybe even trying for international collaboration on standards. That looks like a more sustainable, long-term strategy for the U.S. in this whole AI revolution. It really does make you wonder about trying to build fences in a world where technology, especially open source tech, just flows so freely across borders. Mm -hmm. And thinking longer term, what does the rise of really powerful, cheap open source AI actually mean for everyone? 